This video explains how to drop rows that contain NAN values in a pandas data frame in the Python programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the Python code. As a very first step, we need to import the pandas library, as you can see in the first line of code. And then we also need to create an example data frame using the data frame constructor. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame called data is created. And we can print this data frame below the code box using the print function. And then you can see that we have created a new data frame that contains six rows and the three columns x1, x2 and x3. And some of the data cells in this data frame are NAN. Now, let's assume that we want to remove all rows of our data frame, which contain at least one NAN value. Then we can apply the drop NA function to our data frame, as you can see in the next line of code. And in this case, I'm storing the output of the drop NA function in a new data frame object that I call data1. And then I print this data frame below the code box. And then you can see that we have removed all rows which contained at least one NAN value. It's also possible to drop rows with NAN values in a specific column. And this is what I want to show you in the next example in the fourth code box. So in this code box, I'm once again using the drop NA function. However, within the drop NA function, I specify a subset of columns in which I want to search for NAN values. And in this case, I want to remove only those rows which are NAN in the column X2. So after running this line of code, a new data frame called data2a is created. And after printing this data frame below the code box, we can see that we have kept one row which contains an NAN value in the column X3. However, we have removed all rows with an NAN value in the column X2. Alternatively to the drop NA function, we could also use the not NA function for this task, as you can see in the next line of code. So in this line of code, I specify that I want to keep only those values that are not NAN in the column X2. And then I'm printing this data frame below the code box. And as you can see, this data frame contains exactly the same values as the previously created data frame. However, this time we have used the not NA function instead of the drop NA function. Alternatively, we can also use the not null function, as you can see in the next line of code. So this line of code creates another data frame, which looks exactly the same as the previously created data frames. But this time we have used the not null function. It's also possible to remove only those rows where all values are NAN. And we can do that by using once again the drop NA function. However, this time we have to specify within the drop NA function that the how argument is equal to the character string all. And as in the previous examples, I'm storing the output of the drop NA function in a new data frame object that I call data31. And I'm printing this data frame below the code box. And then you can see that we have removed only one line of our data set. And this line contained NAN values in all of the columns of the data set. Alternatively to the drop NA function, we can also use the not NA and any functions for this task. So after running these lines of code, another data frame is created, which contains only those rows where at least one valid value is occurring. So as you can see, this data frame contains the same values as this data frame. However, this time we have used a different syntax compared to the seventh code box. And as a third example, how to do that, I want to show you that we can also use the not null and any functions to remove rows with only NAN values. So as you can see, after running these lines of code, another data frame is appearing, which contains only rows with at least one value that is not NAN. It is also possible to specify that we want to keep only rows with a certain number of not NAN values. And we can do that by applying the drop NA function. And within the drop NA function, we need to specify the thresh argument. And in this case, we want to keep only those rows where at least two non-NAN values are occurring. 
And for that reason, we specify the value 2 to the thresh argument. So after running these lines of code, another data frame called data4 is created. And as you can see, we have kept only rows with at least two valid values. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.